Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your CAD designs beautiful. From this to this, completely for free. If you're into making, I would highly recommend learning some type of 3D modeling as it greatly increases the benefits of being able to manufacture at home. Whether you're using something simple like Tinkercad or a full-fledged parametric 3D modeler, the content of this video will apply to you. When I upload designs to Thingiverse, I typically include a photo of the finished part. Sometimes I include a little and sometimes I include a lot of CAD. CAD screenshots, if I'm honest, look a little bit average especially compared to those who'd make a proper render of their work. Model designers are particularly good at this, with properly shaded surfaces and detailed shadows looking amazing. You can do this too, and it won't even cost you a cent. And it's for much more than just doing thumbnails on Thingiverse in my mini factory. Think about making a render of something that you want to sell, or maybe building up a design portfolio of all of your CAD work. We're going to start with quickly explaining which software package that I've chosen. Back when I was a teacher, I used to run something called F1 in schools, where we designed little race cars and then used the same CAD models for CFD simulation, as well as exporting high quality renders. The software we used for that was called Reality Server, and it was great because it ran as a part of Onshape. No extra installation, just subscribe for free, and my students had a viable way to add photorealistic rendering to their existing CAD models. I know there's not that many people that use Onshape, however, and when I went to their website, it doesn't seem there's a proper standalone version. For a couple of days, I tried out dozens of free photo rendering programs, and whilst most of them were quite capable, very few had an intuitive user interface and good documentation. So after all of that trial and error, what I settled on was Vectory. Like the others, it's got some really pretty renderings on its homepage, but let me give you some other reasons why it's a good choice. Unless you're doing this for a living, you probably want to do it for free. As it says here, we don't need a credit card or to install anything to use the free version. The main features we need are included, such as having the 3D Studio, a full library of assets, materials and icons, and photorealistic rendering. We're limited to 25 projects, but that's heaps. And we don't get personalized support or the ability to export to augmented reality unless we go for the premium option but I doubt that's going to be a problem for most people. The support docs are very high quality, with most of the menu items explained with examples, and we also have a range of built-in tutorials, some of them videos. But what I really liked here was that I rarely needed the help documents. This program was intuitive, the interface easy to understand, with a good range of environments, assets and materials that I could apply with a simple drag and drop. Let's assume you've made your free account and you want to start with something simple. The first thing we need to do is export our CAD model and you should be able to use any CAD software because the standard STL file format will get the job done. Just make sure you turn up your resolution to the maximum it will go. Now in Vectory, we're going to click to create a new project and we'll start by dragging our STL into the middle of the screen. Unless you're way over the polygon limit, I find everything works fine, so I import it as is. Our object should appear, so let's familiarize ourselves with the camera controls. If we click and hold the right mouse button, we can pan. Clicking and holding the left will orbit the camera, and the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. The main tab we'll be working with is the object tab, and anytime we select something, we'll have its attributes shown on the right hand panel. You'll also notice that while something is selected, we have the interface, which Vectory calls the gizmo. We can drag the arrows to move objects in that direction. We can drag the rings to rotate, and we can do both uniform from the inner box and non-uniform from the outer box scaling. Control Z will undo anything that you've just done. Another area you're gonna spend a lot of time is the library. By default, it will be on collections, but we also have assets, and these are existing 3D models that you can drag into your scene to build it up easily. More on that later. We have materials and we can use these to quickly apply them to our objects. And we also have environments, which change the background, lighting and any reflections in shiny objects. I'm going to come to material and assign my maker coin half a nice material. We have a search feature here. And when we press enter, we'll have a filter and hovering over with the mouse, we'll describe each of the available materials. 
when we find something that we like, we click and drag it onto our object. Now's probably a good time to apply an environment. I'm gonna change my view mode so they're a little bit bigger and easier to see. And I'm gonna go with one with a lot of reflections. We just drag it onto an empty area. Already the preview we're seeing looks pretty decent. And as I orbit the camera, we can just see some clouds and bits like that reflecting on the surface of the model. Once we find an angle that we really like, it's a good idea to save this by coming back to object and then clicking the camera button. It's also a good idea to click the lock and that will prevent us from accidentally altering the camera angle. At any time we can come back to camera, click on the box and we'll be restored to that view. You can set up as many of these as you want to capture your scene from the best angles. One thing that's missing is a shadow underneath the object. So if we come to the primitives and come down to shadow plane, we can click to have one inserted. This one's a little big, so I'm gonna shrink it down much closer to the size of my maker coin. I'm then gonna lock it in place so I don't accidentally drag it when I'm trying to move other objects. One last easy thing I'm gonna do before I render is adding a light. And we have a tool for that with a choice of various lights. I'm gonna go for a spotlight and we can see a representation of this on the screen. And we have the same type of gizmo controls allowing us to easily move the light around to capture the best angle. When you get it in a good position, you'll know because your shadow playing will start to activate. Let's come back to my camera and we'll do our first rendering. At any time we can activate render previews by setting the quality and then clicking start preview. Now, as we move around the camera, a couple of seconds later, we'll see what the scene's gonna look like when it's rendered. If you want the quality to be increased, turn it from low to high. But obviously this is gonna take a little longer. Now we can see here, my light is a little bit bright. So with it selected on the left-hand side, I'm gonna click and drag downwards to turn the intensity right down. Back to my saved camera angle, and I'm gonna come up to render and set up the size of my image to be exported. I found the maximum of either dimension is 5000. And when I'm happy, I simply click download image. As you can see here, we get a preview of the final render. And at any time we can download the incomplete version. When it is done, however, it will automatically download ready for inspection. When we compare this to what we started with, I hope you'll agree that it's a great deal prettier already. It's also worth mentioning that since we exported high res, we can zoom in a fair way and not lose any detail or encounter any pixelization. Already in under 10 minutes, we're up and running with some pretty good results. So let's step it up. We're gonna continue with a multi-part object or what you might call an assembly. Here's some CAD I did for a recent video but didn't end up using, and it's a mold and bottle to show how the process of blow molding would work. I could export the STLs one by one and align them later, but I think it's far easier to show everything that I want, select them all, and then export at the same time. Rather than STL, I'm gonna switch it to step and start my download. Once again, I'm importing my files and it takes under 30 seconds before everything is ready to go. I want an exploded view here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select everything and start moving things into position. Then I'm gonna come up to my library and materials and search for steel. I'll go for the matte blue and I'll apply it to the three pieces of the mold. I'm also gonna come up to environments and import studio Two. If we click on the bottles and then over on the side, change from basic to advanced for our materials, we'll get a lot more options and with them, we can do some pretty good stuff. If we fast forward, we can see that the scene in my opinion is looking pretty good. Let me talk you through what I've done. Firstly, the materials for the bottle have a high rate of reflection, but a low opacity and have also enabled refraction to distort the light a little. What's working really well, however, is the use of three rectangle lights pointing at the bottle from different angles. And that's what's giving these really sharp reflections that show the contours of the bottle. And the other thing that works well is having the camera aligned so we can see the parts of the mold through the translucent edges of the bottle. If we hide these three rectangle lights, you'll see it pops nowhere near as much. We can now export our render for the final result. The final result is something I'm really pleased with, especially when you compare it to the original CAD screenshot. There's no doubt that with more tweaking, we could improve things further, but it's already a great deal better than how we started. Let's step it up again by building up a scene with inbuilt assets to go around our object. 
And in my opinion, this is where Vectory really shines compared to the existing rendering tool in your CAD software. You can display an item in context by surrounding it with objects that are relevant. The item I want to showcase is this ring I modeled and I say modeled instead of designed because as the title suggests, it's inspired by an existing work by Australian designer Cinnamon Lee. She is someone the students used to study when I was a teacher. She uses 3D printing as well as traditional tools with some really, really interesting designs. Instead of importing my geometry first, I'm going to come to the library and then the assets and I'm going to fill it up to make it look like an actual room or scene where I can display the ring. Now there is a filter here. I've turned on all the ones that don't need signing in. You can see you can actually add my mini factory, but you need to sign in and the responsibility is on you to check the licenses for any objects you use to make sure you have permission. Back to the assets and I'm going to search for table. We've got a cool table here, so I'm going to drag it out. This table is just as cool as I hoped. So I'm going to build up more of a scene. Basically, I'm going to aim for a whole room and that's going to create a nice area for me to display the ring on top of. And we fast forward and here's what I ended up with. Here we have a nice room with some furniture and props for the background. I've set up two cameras. The one we're seeing now is a setup camera and I've also got one saved for where I'm going to take the actual rendering. Let's have a quick look at what makes up the scene. For the floor and the walls, I've just got flat rectangular planes and I've applied materials that are built into Vectory. All of the furniture and props also comes from the assets library and I've set up three lights, two spotlights pointing down from above and a point light that I've positioned inside the lamp. And with nothing selected, I've turned down the light intensity for the whole scene and that makes it seem more like nighttime and a little bit moodier. Now this type of shape was going to look interesting no matter what, but I really think setting it up in a scene like this adds a great deal to the presentation. And here is the final rendering. It looks pretty good, but there's still a few easy things we can do to make it even better. It's time for some advanced tips and tricks. In isolation, each of the following simple tips are worthwhile, but if we add them all together, we can really crank it up to 11. Our first tip regards lighting, and this is a 3D scan of my face cut into a block as a negative. As you can see, I've set up three lights, one from the left, one from the right, and one pointing up from underneath. Let's render a preview. We can see the lights make the image more dramatic as they show the contours and add some contrast. But let's do something really simple to mix this up. Here's the same model looking a lot more dynamic with one tiny change. For each of the lights, I changed the color from the default white to something more dramatic. By picking the right combinations of colors, you can really change the mood of your render. Next up, we're going to look at how to improve low quality assets. As we can see, this one here is far from round. And if we're going for a photo real render, it might ruin the effect. If we click on the object and then come up to generate and then subdivision surface, we have a built in function to smooth things out. We can still see this one's not quite round enough. So I'm going to turn up the level to two. There's a little bit of distortion inside, but as an object in the background, it now looks way more realistic. There's actually a lot of powerful tools up here. For instance, we have different ways to create multiples with arrays. We can then randomize those arrays and we even have deformation tools. Seen here is the twist tool. It's just really fun and worthwhile exploring these tools to see what you might find. We saw this render earlier. It's pretty, but not that realistic. So here's a subtle tweak to achieve just that. You'll notice now the background is slightly out of focus. The difference here is we've enabled depth of field and that works just like a real lens, either in our eye or a camera, where we can't focus sharply on everything in frame at the same time. To get this going is really simple. We need to select our camera and then over on the right, make sure depth of field is turned on and then click the two concentric circles next to focus offset. The next point we click is where the camera will be focused. I'm going to go for the top corner of the ring. And then the last thing to tweak is the size. A large number will exaggerate the effect. And a small number will make it far more subtle. For the image you saw earlier, I settled on 10. One more tip and I've saved the best for last. Time to activate beast mode. Here's where we're currently at and this is what we're going to end up with. I hope you agree there's a huge improvement in terms of shadows, reflections, and light. You might have noticed in the render settings that there's actually two modes, Instant, which we've used thus far, and Photon, which is in beta. The first time you switch to Photon, 
there's going to be a download link there and it will install this companion app. It needed zero configuration and when you minimize it, it's hidden. Now when we click start rendering, we can see that data is sent to the companion app and then it starts to go through iterations, improving the image as it goes. For our final image, we can once again input the size we want and click download image and we'll start to see a preview appear on the right hand panel. As the image is improved, we can click at any time to download where it's currently at. Early on, the image will be extremely grainy. A few minutes later, it will be quite a bit cleaner, but still need work, but give it enough time and enough iterations will have occurred to clean up all of the noise. The render will improve the longer that you leave it, but the returns diminish over time. To keep things sensible, we have two limits that we can input, either the amount of samples or a time limit. Experimenting, I set the resolution to 4K with a 10 hour time limit and 9000 sample limit. Sensibly, you don't need to wait for the timer to run out because at any time you can click the icon in the upper right of the preview thumbnail and a few seconds later, the current iteration will download for you to inspect and assuming you're happy with the quality, you can safely go back, cancel the rendering and you're done. Just make sure you download before you click cancel. To tie all of this together, I set up a simple scene with the humble Benchy. And considering this setup took only five minutes, the results are spectacular. Industry standard rendering solutions like Keyshot are quite expensive and other free choices often require you learning complicated tools like Blender. Even if these other options are ultimately more powerful, I'm really pleased with Vectory. I didn't have to spend time or money learning a hard to understand interface. Instead, the UI wasn't an issue and I spent my time experimenting and having fun. Please let me know in the comments if you're going to give this a go. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy photorealistic rendering. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.